Hey guys, I'm Rick. Welcome back to Maple Syrup Tech. It won't be a very long video today. We're just going to do a quick unboxing for my preparation for Ryzen 3. So to no one's surprise, the channel is way too small and obviously I don't have enough presence yet to be getting a press kit. So the Ryzen 3 processor I'm going to be buying out of pocket as well as all the gear for the preparation. So basically today what we're just going to do is that since the release of Ryzen is actually tomorrow, we're doing a short video to unbox the motherboard in memory that I got for testing my Ryzen 3 processor. We'll go over quickly an overview of both, you know, of, both of the memory kit and the motherboard and uh, see why I chose this and basically, you know, what I why I think that this is going to be a standard combo for someone purchasing a Ryzen 3, which will make it the best test bed we can have to see the performance with mid-range. I'm aiming to test it with, you know, entry level or mid-range video cards. Because if anyone's buying a Ryzen 3 to slap a 1080 Ti on it, uh, it's maybe not the best purchase for your money. But, you know, hey, you never know what you're going to get. So let's take a look at what we got. So let's start with the memory kit. Should be in here. Let's hope I got the stuff I actually ordered for. It's already happened that, you know, ordering mistakes, you got incompatible kits or completely the wrong thing. Okay, we've got a Ballistics 8 gigabyte kit. So we've got a RAM kit, uh, eight gigabytes of RAM, DDR4 Ballistics, uh, Ballistics Sport. So we'll be uh, slapping that into the Ryzen motherboard and seeing uh, how it goes. So nothing special there. We're not gonna take way much time. I'm gonna give a close up on it a little bit later but it's really nothing special at all, you know, just a standard eight gigabyte kit, 2400 rated RAM, because I don't think Ryzen 3 will be the best to run like 3200 megahertz RAM on it. The memory controllers, I'm not expecting it to be the highest grade ones on these processors. And now for the motherboard. This one we're maybe gonna spend a little bit more time on Taking a look at what we got, what it is, and whatnot. Okay. So, we've got the ASRock AB350M Pro 4, which is, in my opinion, when you set it up at, for an entry-level uh, motherboard, one of the best motherboards you can, you, you can get price quality. It's an entry-level AB350. Uh, I paid about a hundred bucks Canadian for it. In the US you can probably get it slightly under a hundred when it's on special. And basically with it you're getting a really nice feature set. So basically you have, it's a micro ATX board. So no, you won't be mining with this board or anything like that because there is only, you know, the minimum number of, uh, of slots for your memory cards. But, you know, anyone building a Ryzen 3 system aiming for light gaming isn't going to be running a Crossfire or dual GPU setup anyway. So, in my opinion, this is probably the best board for the money you can get right now um, for tr throwing in a Ryzen 3 processor. So, like I said, let's take a quick close-up at the board and we're going to look at the features that are on it. Okay, guys, we're back with the close-up of the motherboard. So we're going to be looking at the general features just really quickly. Like I said, today it's an overview. It's not an actual review of the motherboard because we won't be plugging it in and testing it yet for a couple of days. So we're going to go over the reasons why I'm saying that this is a very decent uh, entry level motherboard. Number one, you have heat sinks on the MOSFETs. And for an entry level, you'll see a lot of $100 boards actually leave the MOSFETs without any heat sinks on them. If you're looking at overclocking Ryzen, I would really recommend paying an extra five or ten dollars for a board that actually cools the MOSFETs. Uh, you know, over a short period of time, it's probably not going to matter much. With a Ryzen 3 processor, I don't think you're going to be overheating them with the wattage going through it. But nonetheless, if you just want the option to maybe throw in a Ryzen 5 one day and try really pushing an overclock, you're better off having cooling on the MOSFETs. Number two, Board offers four DIMM slots. Obviously, uh, it seems like a given, but 
we'll start seeing some really entry-level boards with only two dim slots. I prefer always having the option for four. Number one is you can actually put in four dims. Number two is that if ever you have a defective slot, you actually have something to switch to. On a two dim slot board, I've already had a defective slot and basically you're stuck purchasing RAM over, you know, only that has to fit into only one RAM slot, not even being able to run it in dual channel. After that, uh, you know, I was saying it had the basic cards, but you actually have a 16X and a 4X uh, PCI Express with a 1X. So I really wanted a second PCI Express just because sometimes it can be useful for like an, um, an SSD or any kind of, you know, secondary RAM. You've actually got an M.2 slot on this board as well. Uh, you've got at least two USB 2 headers, which is very useful if ever you're going to run uh, water cooling on it. Uh, an AIO, so it's really useful to have actually two USB 2 slots. And the last reason is because you still have some generous USB ports. You have at least four USB 3 ports, two USB 2 ports, and a USB 3.1. So honestly, on an entry level board for a hundred bucks, you're getting a really decent setup with the board. And honestly, looks wise, I like the black white combos or black silver combos because it can fit into any build and pretty much, you know, not ruin any kind of color scheme, especially if you're going to go RGB. And actually, I'm seeing right here, there's actually a secondary M.2 slot down here. So actually, you're getting two M.2s. I actually thought in the uh, specs, I saw that there was only one, but uh, stand, I stand corrected. However, I have to go over the specs because it's possible that if you're using one with the 16X, maybe the second one will not be running, something like that. I'll go validate and get back. And you even have here a plug for um, USB 3, you know, USB 3 for your front headers. And you've got actually two LED headers at the top. So if you're going to be running any type of RGB strips, or if you want to, if you actually get the AMD uh, cooler with the uh, LED in it, but you know, you'd be looking at Ryzen 7 at that point, you'll have the RGB option right up there at the top. So honestly, I'd maybe run this board with a 1700. Uh, I probably wouldn't put a 1700X or an 1800 in here. But other than that, I think you can fit in the whole, all the rest of the Ryzen lineup on this board and feel pretty safe. Um, and as well, always appreciate it. I like this when your SATA ports actually load off of the side. It helps a lot with cable management, makes it a lot tidier. So that's you know another option on this board that I like. So far, I've been really pleased with the ASRock products for price quality purposes. You know, they're maybe not the flashiest boards. They're not the most packed boards, but you're always getting a lot for the money you're paying for the boards. And so far, so far, reliability wise, I've been really pleased with what I've got. So I hope you appreciated the unboxing today. Uh, we're going to end the video here. I'm not going to do a whole wrap up conclusion where you see me. Oh yeah, by the way, if anyone's wondering, you only get one SATA cable with the, uh, with the board in the box. So nothing special, you know, no, uh, no other, uh, no other gadgets come with the board, but you know, that's what to expect with an entry level board. So like I said, I'm going to end the video here. We're not going to do a whole uh, conclusion or whatnot. We're going to actually leave that for the Ryzen 3 video that I'm going to be trying to pop up on the weekend. So far, none of the local retailers have been able to tell me whether or not they actually have Ryzen 3 already in stock. So uh, actually, they're being really either they're being really tight-lipped with the NDAs or, or AMD is really not shipping them out before with what happened with Ryzen 5 where a lot of retailers were selling them before the release date. So I hope you guys liked the video. I hope you guys liked the overview and I'll see you guys in the next video.